Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride back again with another video. And today I wanted to make a quick little video talking you through how I typically use my ruler and circle template to create fonts. This is something that I have been asked so many times in my comments here on YouTube. So many variations of the question, how do I know how to use my ruler and circle template to create letters that fit a particular font or style that I'm going for? Now, I feel like I have to put a disclaimer at the beginning, which is that I am not an expert at creating fonts. There are so many amazing lettering artists out there who, first of all, could probably freehand the stuff that I meticulously use a ruler and circle template for, but there are also just people out there who, you know, know a lot more about fonts and creating letter forms than I do. So please take my advice for what it is, just my advice from my personal experience of what I have learned to do that has allowed me to create some more intricate or uniform fonts than I could do just freehanding. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's jump into this particular quote page that I'm creating that I'm using as an example to show you how I use these tools. So what I'm creating here is a quote page for Father's Day because it's a bit of a more complicated font. So I think it allows me to show you a few more techniques than some simpler fonts. And something else I love about this particular font or this style is that not only does it have many straight lines, but it also has a lot of curves and flourishes. So again, I feel like this is not only a little bit of a more complicated font in general to create and might be the type of font that you might want to reach for a ruler and circle template for, but it also allows me to show you lots of different types of letter forms. So starting from the beginning, one of my favorite techniques for lettering is to do extensive sketching ahead of time. You'll always see in my videos that I sketch out pretty much everything before I ink it in or paint it. I don't trust my ability to freehand things to my own exacting standards. So I always pencil things in first and I often will change dimensions and redraw things and clean things up pretty pretty extensively before I go to the inking stage. And I think that this is honestly one of the most important tips I'm going to share in this video, spending the time in the sketching stage, not only on the composition and placement of whatever quote to your writing, but also on the letter forms themselves is just going to lead to a better result in the end. So I highly recommend it if you're not usually someone who likes to sketch things first give it a try. I think you might find that your results are a lot more polished and uniform. Once I'm happy with my sketch, the first step I always like to do is to start with my ruler and attack the straight lines. Personally, for me, I really like to work on a single orientation at a time. As you can see here, I'm starting with all the vertical lines or diagonal lines that are closer to being vertical than they are to being horizontal. And this is honestly mostly for the ease of moving the ruler around the page and just for the comfort and speed of creating these lines. But it's also to help with the consistency because if I'm working only on those vertical or diagonal lines, for every single letter, I can make sure that I'm getting a similar distance between the lines, which will lead to a more uniform line weight in the end. And also just making sure that I am addressing each letter in as similar a way as possible by focusing on specific portions of the letter forms at a time. Hopefully that makes sense. So I like to start with those vertical lines or again, diagonals that are mostly vertical, like the diagonal lines in a V, for example. Once I have all the vertical lines, sometimes my next step will be to go to all my horizontal lines. But this particular font has basically no straight horizontal lines. Most of the horizontal elements are curved in some way. For that reason, I'm now grabbing my circle template. I'll link the specific circle template that I like to use in the comments down below. This is probably one of my most used tools, and I'm sure y'all have seen it a million times if you've been watching my videos for a while. Of course, you don't need a circle template. If you're really good at freehanding curves, then go ahead and freehand them. But I have shaky hands, probably due to a combination of anxiety and too much caffeine. <laughs> I prefer to rely on my circle template to make sure that the curves are nice and uniform. A lot of you ask how I use my circle template, and I feel like it's a little hard to describe, which is why I haven't done this video yet, but I'm going to do my best. 
in this video. <laughs> Basically what I do is I look at the sketch, I look at the curve I'm trying to achieve, and I see if there's a circle on my circle template that is just the right size to either draw the entire curve all in one go or most of the curve. The larger amount of the curve that you can get on a single circle, the nicer it's going to turn out because you don't have to worry about extending it and making sure your pen is in the exact right place after lifting off the page. But again, depending on what you're doing, you might have to switch between multiple circle sizes to get the entire curve. And you can see me doing that here over and over again, because so many of these letters have a larger curve that kind of spirals in at the end. Those end portions are a tighter curve than the larger curved portion of the letter form, which means that I start with a larger circle to get the main curve. And then I have to find a smaller circle to bring in that smaller portion at the end of the curve that spirals inward. So again, a lot of this is just moving around my circle template, as you can see, trying to find that circle that best fits the curve I'm going for and continuing to switch to different sizes of circles as needed to finish off a curve, especially if they are a curve that ends in a little bit of a tighter spiral. For this particular font, I wanted it to have a bit of a thicker line weight. And I would recommend if you're using this technique to use the finest pen that you can get away with. I'm using my Secura Micron 005 here, which is a very fine tipped nib with the plan of filling these letters in later to have a thicker line weight. In my experience, especially when you're using this kind of a technique with a ruler and a circle template, starting with thinner lines that you're planning on making thicker means that you have a lot more leeway for recovering from mistakes. It also means it's easier to make adjustments if you're not happy with a certain portion of a letter. It can't cover for every mistake or for every adjustment. You may still need to use a little bit of a corrector that matches the color of your page, but I do find that using a finer tipped pen with the intention of creating a letter that is thicker than the line weight of that pen in the end really, really helps with making this technique look really polished and clean in the final result. Another question I get asked a lot is how do I come up with fonts? And my number one tip for coming up with new fonts is just to do research, to look online, to notice if there's an ad that has a font you like. If you're on Pinterest and you see a quote and you like the font that's there, save it to a board for inspiration and try out different types of fonts. You can even get a free font. There are lots of websites that have free fonts that you can download to your computer and try typing out what you want to write in the font so that you can see how all the different letter forms look and how they fit together and use that as a guide for the lettering that you're going to do on your page. You don't have to come up with a font completely from scratch. You can 100% take inspiration from the many amazing fonts that already exist. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? Though it can be really fun to combine elements from multiple fonts together to create something that is uniquely yours. So I'm just continuing the same technique. Again, I started with those vertical lines right at the beginning, and I'm just moving my way down using my circle template to add in all of those small curved details. If you have more tips, more advice for creating fonts, if there are other tools that you personally love to use for font creation that I didn't talk about in this video, please leave them in a comment down below. I would love to hear your tips and tricks. And of course, as always, all the supplies I used in this video will be linked in the description box down below. So check that out if you want to get the same ones that I was using. Now, as I get to the bottom here, this is the very small font that says Happy Father's Day at the bottom. Some of these letters are quite small, and for some of them, I'm actually finding it a little bit easier to freehand some of these curves and connections rather than using my circle template. So again, this is something to keep in mind based on your own steadiness and the look you're going for. I find that this section of quote is so small that you're not going to notice if the curves aren't perfectly evenly curved or perfectly perfectly proportionate, whereas on the larger letters, it's a lot more obvious if those curves are a bit wobbly or not quite even or symmetrical. So again, a lot of this is just going to be your own judgment and trial and error. You have to do what works best for you. 
Once I have all the outlines of the letters done, I can go back and fill in all of these letters. And this is the time when I can make adjustments as needed. So as you can see here, I wasn't super happy with the curve on the A in dad. So after I filled it in, I went back in with my circle template to adjust the curve. And because these letters are thicker than just the line weight of my pen, I'm able to make those slight adjustments without making it stand out or look heavier in line weight compared to the other letters that I maybe didn't have to adjust. I continue to use the same really fine nibbed pen to fill them in. Again, this is just for precision's sake. If I'm using a really fine nibbed pen, it does take me a little longer to fill in the letters completely, but it does really help with making sure I can stay between the lines and have a really precise fill. It also makes it easy if I do want to make any adjustments that I don't have to switch to another pen. I can just keep the same pen in my hand as I fill things in and make slight adjustments. So that is the basic technique of how I use rulers and circle templates to create fonts. I really hope that this answers the questions that so many of you have had. Again, this is something that I have wanted to address in a video for a long time because it has been so frequently asked because using the tools that are around me to help me to get nice clean lines to adjust for my natural shakiness of hand is just something that I did without even thinking about it or considering it. So it's really taken me a while to try to think of a way that I could explain it that could be truly helpful to everyone else that doesn't live inside my brain. So I really, really hope that this was helpful. I hope that it showed you that it's actually a really, really simple process. It is trial and error and using the tools that you have at your disposal, in this case, a ruler and a circle template to find the shapes that best align with your sketch or your vision and to use those to get nice, clean, straight lines or nice proportionate curves. If you still have questions after watching this, please leave them in a comment down below. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We would love to have you. And before I go, I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Exuko, Gunner, and Hester. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so happy to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. I actually did a whole live stream that was more than an hour long with my patrons a few months back, going into even more detail of how I create letter forms using my circle template and my ruler, how I approach creating fonts. If you want access to that video, it is available to all patrons over the $3 level. You can go back and watch old live streams. So if you want to see that, if you want to see more about how I approach creating letters, consider joining our little Patreon family. And that's it. I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.